scales, whether it's in Fulton County, Philadelphia County, New York County, they're all pretty much the same. They're inefficient places. They're not designed for customer service. Uh, the kinds of things that you might get addressed in a few minutes at some private company uh, get addressed in hours upon hours. They're understaffed. Uh, they don't smell great. And normally they are a shocking place, even if you are flanked by Secret Service members who are there to protect you. Uh, but of course, it was always going to be the case that the former president was going to receive special treatment at this jail uh, because he is the former president. He is flanked by Secret Service members, and it is in both sides' interest to get in and out of, out of there as quickly as possible. Jails are always concerned about disruptions. They're always concerned about safety. And again, they're under-resourced, understaffed. Uh, this one, this particular jail, is reportedly the source of an investigation by uh, DOJ. So uh, it's probably like most other large county jails, an unpleasant, unsafe, inefficient place to be, unless you're the former president. So the next guy that walks in there tonight on an unrelated charge, it's not going to be 15, 20 minutes. He will not ride back in a motorcade 15 or 20 minutes after he gets out. He will probably sit uh, on a cot that is maybe an inch thick. If there is a cot, sometimes there isn't a cot. Um, they, you know, I've even seen photos of the Fulton County Jail. It looks pretty similar to most other jails. Not a great place to be. Uh, normally, you get a full health screening. I don't think he's going to get that. But, of course, it really depends on what they've worked out with Secret Service and maybe even with the sheriff in advance. Yeah, we may be getting a little more on that. Uh, Laura, you're, you've got some more of the court it, activity. Yeah, it just it shows sort of the formal list of the charges. Again, you can see it on screen there uh, with all of the different amounts for each of the individual charges. They break it up like that. That's standard. And, again, in the top uh, right-hand corner there, you can see uh, his race, his weight, his height, all of the standard biographical information. Um, and, you know, it, it just strikes me, as, as Danny was pointing out, there are so many differences in a case, obviously, involving the former president and having Secret Service there and not having to spend, you know, more than 15 minutes uh, in a in a situation like this in a, in a jail cell, of course not. But it does strike us, I think, that now that we're on our fourth one of these, um, mm -hmm. that the system is holding. Uh, the system is still functioning. He is still putting up a bond amount. He is still actually having to be traipsed into a county jail. And so even though there are certainly striking differences between him and any other criminal defendant, I do think it is worth pointing out that he still does have to go through the indignity of this process. Chris and Welker, uh, you, you can't escape what we saw last night in the Republican debate. The people who are running against him, the people who want the job that he held, are having a difficult time condemning him and, and what we're seeing here today. That will continue all the way up to election day. It absolutely will. One of the most striking moments of that first GOP primary debate last night, Lester, was when the moderators asked if the candidates would continue to support former President Trump even if he is convicted of any of these crimes. And all of the candidates raised their hand to say yes, except for two, Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson. And so I think it speaks to the fact that politically speaking, because when you look at the polls, we just released a poll this week uh, of Iowa caucus goers, and he has a lead of 23 points over Ron DeSantis. So attacking him is just not popular. And these Republican candidates are really twisting themselves into knots, um, trying to figure out how to do it. I'm told um, by someone who is with him that they will be leaving soon. Uh, and so we expect to see his motorcade on the move soon. And we're trying to get reaction and trying to get more information about everything that has occurred um, with this booking process. But again, just an extraordinary set of events unfolding tonight. In and as we've seen in some of the other court proceedings or, or, or booking uh, proceedings, of uh, the supporters of the former president have gathered. We're seeing it in Atlanta outside the courthouse. Gabe Gutierrez, what are you seeing? Uh, hey there, Lester. Well, a lot of these supporters uh, had wanted to see the former president as he came into the Fulton County Jail. That did not happen, at least at this location, because he went in around the corner where my colleague Blayden Alexander is. But I can show you that this crowd, you know, continues uh, to stay here and wait to see if they might catch a glimpse. Uh, if he were to pass by here, this entire street it is uh, shut down, Lester. This is Rice Street, very well known uh, here in Atlanta. And if my uh, colleague Randy Brown can 
can pan over there and show the police presence, the sheriff's deputies that are across the street. And actually, uh, you can see uh, the sheriff's deputies. It might be tough to catch behind this sign here, but uh, there are several of them that have been here really throughout the day. And we did see a ramping up of security earlier today as they uh, put up more barricades, um, you know, to try and make sure uh, that this was an orderly process. So far, it has been. But again, several of Mr. Uh, Trump's supporters were hoping to catch a glimpse of him. Um, but again, it's just uh, historic. And I can tell you, Lester, from being uh, at uh, several of these other court proceedings in New York and also in Miami, it is remarkable to see a former president of the United States go through this surrender to authorities here, um, now facing his, his fourth uh, indictment. So uh, the supporters here say that they will stay until he leaves. And again, they're hoping to catch one more glimpse of him, perhaps as he leaves uh, Fulton County Jail, though he will likely do it uh, from around the corner. Yeah, and, and, and Gabe, let me say, I, I'm glad you pointed out the historic nature of this because we tend to easily get jaded with, with uh, you know, moments like this right. because we're seeing the fourth one here as you point out, in just less than less than five months. I want to bring in former federal prosecutor, NBC News legal analyst, Carol Lamb. Carol, did we get a bit of a preview of the logjam to come in this case? The um, Not just this case, all four and, and the scheduling issues that could raise their heads? Oh, we certainly have, Lester. What we've previously called a, a bumper cars problem with, with all of these trials butting up against each other. I think we now actually with Fannie Willis's case have a um, have a sort of uh, broomstick problem where it's splintering into many different possible trials. And uh, I think that Fannie Willis, although she has said she really wants this trial to go quickly and, and to happen before the election, I think she realizes that that's likely not going to happen with all 19 defendants. And the former president has now told the court that he does not want to, to exercise his speedy trial rights here. Uh, the way Mr. Cheesebro has. And so I think what's likely to happen is his trial will uh, will be far into the future and Jack Smith's trial of President former President Trump will probably go on much sooner. All right, Carol, thank you. We're looking at the, uh, the motorcade of former President Trump as it exits the jail complex right now. Uh, and I understand we've got some word about whether a mugshot was taken. We have just been told by one of the former president's aides who is with uh, President Trump, that in fact, it is their understanding that a mugshot was taken. Um, these aides have not seen the mugshot yet, but again, uh, they have been told that there was a mugshot. And so we are waiting to get more information about that. But that was one of the big questions looming over these proceedings. Would there in fact be a mugshot? And there was and a lag so, in, in some of the earlier defendants yeah. who, who yes. came in. This we would expect to see before the night is over. Well, and we've certainly requested it along with every other media organization, as you can imagine. And, you know, we'd wondered whether the sheriff would do this as he had said he was going to treat him like everybody else. Um, but as Kristen has raised, you know, there are political implications to doing so. And he might be able to use it for his own purposes. But for the sheriff's purposes, if you're trying to show even handed administration of justice and going through the routine booking process, this is part of that process. But Lester, this is the first time he's had to do it in every other surrender in New York, in Miami, in Washington, D.C. He hasn't had to take a mugshot. It is clear that that he wanted to see this. Um, you know, he, he put the information out that he would be surrendering at 730 tonight on his own uh, Truth Social. Right. So this was a, a moment that he wanted the, uh, the nation to see. Well, this is part of his strategy of energizing his supporters, Lester. This is part of the former president's way of making his case that he believes these are unfair proceedings. It is worth noting that in an earlier indictment, when there was not a mugshot taken, the campaign released a fake mugshot and released it on a fundraising email and raised a lot of money. It is an effective way to energize and rally his supporters. And now here they, it seems at this point, have the real thing. And so we wait for it to be actually released. But this yeah. is just a hugely significant somber moment, this, a mugshot of a former president. And this, this camera you're looking at, uh, this is a, a pool camera. It's, a, it's to feed to the press, so it's within, uh, within the motorcade now as it uh, leaves the area. Let's go back to Blaine Alexander. Have you seen the, the motorcade make it past you? 
Absolutely. We saw it as it drove out of this gate, Lester. We saw it as it sped down the road and we saw it as we, it disappeared from the streets. You know, I, I want to weigh in on that mugshot conversation, too. This is a decision that I know was not taken lightly. In fact, I understand that there were discussions and considerations as to whether or not this would happen, whether or not a mugshot would, mugshot would actually be taken up until today. So there was certainly a lot of weight behind this uh, decision to take a mugshot. We understand that there were conversations, uh, perhaps some who were pushing back on it. So certainly very interesting to see that it actually has materialized. Now, as for here outside of the jail, I want to just kind of clock how quickly that happened. He drove in and drove out. That motorcade left within 22 minutes. That is a stunningly fast amount of time when you talk about the fact that he was able to get inside, get fingerprinted, mugshot, booked, and then leave the jail in that same motorcade. Again, some inmates, some people who come in here just on a normal day, if you or I were to come in here, it could take upwards of 12 hours to do the exact same process that we just saw unfold here. Uh, so we know, again, that the bond was already in place. We know that the booking information actually made it online before the former president even entered the building. So that just kind of speaks to how expedited this entire thing yeah, was. And, and Blaine, uh, certainly, again, though, the fact that he took a mugshot, very, very stunning moment here in Atlanta. Yeah, Blaine, uh, just very quickly, uh, is the expectation he flies back to New Jersey tonight? All right, well, we continue uh, to, to watch that motorcade as we uh, briefly lose the signal. The former president, again, has been processed, formally booked. And as you just heard, we have uh, confirmed that a mugshot was taken, which we presume will be released uh, for the public at some point in the not distant future. That concludes this NBC News special report. We'll continue coverage on our streaming network, NBC News Now.